than Johnny. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Johnny McIntyre. Um, as she said, I'm the Lucas County Poet Laureate and the first uh, female to be in that role. Um, and I'm actually also the first uh, person who is not academic. So I'm not a professor, I'm not a scholar, I'm not, so I have notes, and I am not nearly as charismatic as these readers have been. So, you know, bear with me on this. Um, but I loved these. Uh, the different perspectives that, that have been presented today, and what a wonderful event. I'm just really um, grateful to be a part of it and uh, happy to be here on campus. Um, so, yeah, thanks. Um, I wanted to, to focus on how poetry itself, um, by the nature of how we use language in poetry, makes itself very vulnerable to, ban, to being banned and to being um, interpreted in negative ways if, it, if it's chosen to be interpreted in negative ways. So you think about poetry in particular, um, how the language in poetry, how the word choice, it's electrified language, right? It's not the same as fiction where you've got whole pages and whole sentences even. You have extra words in fiction. And so when you read fiction, you might not actually read each word, right? You kind of skim it, you kind of get the whole, um, you just get the flow of it. You don't actually hold on to each word. But think about how you interact with poetry when you read poetry. You read each word and you say it to yourself in your head. Or if you're really obnoxious like me, you say it out loud and make everybody else hear it too, because it's cool, right? Um, it is songwriting, it is jingle writing, it is around us all the time. It's this, this way of telling a story but making it very um, concise and quick, but at the same time wide open to any interpretation or, or different um, ways of looking at it. And it's a way that we can share what we're thinking with other people so that they're saying those same words in their own mind. So um, I was thinking about, about that, about that act of reading it and how we sort of speak these words to ourselves, but they're someone else's words. And I remember um, in 2017, we had, as part of the Authors Authors series, we had Juan Felipe Herrera. Has anyone heard of this writer? Are there any poetry fans here at all? Oh, come on, we love it. Maybe you just think it's like dead guy stuff that's on the shelf. It's not, it's not. Amanda Gorman. You know who Amanda Gorman is? Okay, right? Okay. Um, or really anyone on the, that you hear on the radio. That's, that's poetry as well. Songwriting is poetry, rap is poetry, spoken word is poetry. Okay. But, this guy, Juan Felipe Pereira. Okay, so in 2017, he came and he visited us in Toledo, which was a huge deal because at the time he was the poet laureate of the United States and he was the first Mexican American poet laureate. Um, and it was a huge deal because in 2017, there was a very, very distinct anti immigration. Um, mood going. So this was when the whole build the wall, uh, you know, chant was, was very, very prominent in the news. And when he came here, Juan Felipe Pereira did this really, really fantastic thing. First of all, he's a very charismatic guy. Like he, he got off of the stage and he walked into the crowd. He was talking to individuals and they actually like had to tell him to get back on stage and like use a microphone. Like, Stop walking on other people, this is too much. Um, but he did this really cool thing. He was writing a poem, he was working on something, and he said, I want to work it out with you. So what I want you to do, I'm going to read a line and then I want you to say it back to me. And it was so moving because when he read his poem, there were lines like, I am Mexican, I am Mexican. Why are you afraid of me? Why are you afraid of me? You would leave me outside if you could. You would leave me outside if you could. 
And this audience that was mostly white, mostly, you know, were Midwestern, suburban, whatever, repeated his words. And we felt it. We understood what he said because we were saying the same words. We had to be the thing that he was trying to explain to us while it was happening. It was extremely um, powerful. And in poetry, this is the thing. It can come down to a single word. It can come down to just one word that becomes, you know, the crux of, of what might be banned. So, um, I don't know if you know uh, Gwendolyn Brooks. This is a, a, a perfect example of how it can come down to one word. Is Gwendolyn Brooks. Uh, she has a poem called We Real Cool. Do you know that one? I'm going to read it, okay? And you try and tell me what you think the word is that's, that's at the heart of the problem here. We Real Cool. The pool players. Seven at the golden shovel. We Real Cool. We left school. We lurk late, we strike straight. We sing thin, we thin gin. We jazz June, we die soon. What do you think, what was the issue? What's the word, one word? Just take a guess, anything. Which one, thin? Oh, see, that makes, right? That's, people don't like that, that seems bad. No, jazz. We jazz June. Ooh, oh, what could that mean? Um, because they didn't know, they thought it meant sex. When you don't know, apparently it means sex. That's that's what we learned from banned books, right? If you don't know what something means, it must be about sex. Okay. So the school districts banned the poem for supposed sexual connotations of the word jazz. Um, and we just heard about how black girls are sexualized. So isn't that interesting that that's the assumption they made? Okay, so they talked to Gwendolyn Brooks about it. And, and in this uh, book that came out from University Press of Mississippi in 2003, um, here's what she said, this is quoted. I didn't mean that at all. I meant that these young men would have wanted to challenge everything that was accepted by proper people. So I thought of something that's accepted by almost everybody. And that's summertime, the month of June. So these pool players, instead of paying the customary respect to the loveliness of June, the flowers, blue sky, honey weather, they wanted instead to derange it, to scratch their hands in it as if it were a head of hair. This is what went through my head. That's, that's what I meant. They're just messing with June, right? Jazz June. But, she said wisely, however, a space can be permitted for sexual interpretation. Talking about different interpretations gives me a chance to say something I firmly believe, that poetry is for personal use. When you read a poem, you may not get out of it all that poem put in, that poet put into it, but you are different from the poet. You're different from everybody else who is going to read the poem. So you should take it from it, what you need. Use it personally, right? That's what all of our reading is. It's us receiving those words and then making them our own, doing our own interpretation, right? Which is not a legislator's interpretation, but our own as an individual. Okay. So it made me think of another, another banned book. And I'm not going to go into the whole thing because the next one is Walt Whitman, and like there are plenty of lecture series and scholars have done all kinds of stuff, and okay. But just talking about leaves of grass, right? Think about what a quintessential American writer Walt Whitman is. We hold this person up as the father of free verse. And yet, at the same time, wow, that guy's been challenged. And he kept putting the same like books out and then just at, tacking on new poems and putting it out and tacking on new poems and then changing the poems, which I think is genius because he's just kind of, he had Song of Myself and then he kept editing it. Like how genius is that? We're always editing our songs of ourselves, right? Who we are. Uh, but I wanted to read a few of the lines from Leaves of Grass. This is the very, the very beginning of it. 
And Lisa Grass, he first put out, he self-published. So in 1855, um, he put out Leaves of Grass, and this is the very beginning of that poem. Um, I celebrate myself and what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loafe and invite my soul. I lean and loafe at my ease, observing a sphere of summer grass. Houses and rooms are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself and know it and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not a perfume. It has no taste of the distillation. It is odorless. It is for my mouth forever. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. So here's this person who just loves being around people and out and glories in sort of the everything, right? The sunlight, the newness, the sharedness, the common. And let's go back to what Juan Felipe Pereira did. He got that room to say his words back to him. So they not only were listening, they were saying it. They were trying to understand what it felt like to be him, to say what he is saying. Think about how powerful that is, right? It doesn't make them him. It doesn't You read something, it doesn't make you that thing. Of course, that's silly. But it does expand how you see things and how you understand each other. So here is my challenge to you, okay? Whether you like poetry or not, seek out writers right now. The other people in your classes, the other people around you, seek out the poets, seek out the musicians, seek out the people who are doing artwork right now around you, yourselves. Try it yourself. Write something yourself. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be better. And you can say scary things. But just try it. Go off campus and go to poetry readings and go see bands and go see local artists because that's where the creation of new work comes from. And the more we hear and listen to each other, the more we support each other right now, the more when this comes back, and it always comes back, there are two things we know to be true. One, there will always be people trying to shut you up. There will always. Two, there will always be people trying to talk. So be the creators, support the creators. That's my job. Thank you. ToledoPoet.com. If you ever want to go to something, ToledoPoet.com.